Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So today I'm having a little bit of trouble with this monitor. So you see I've got a multi-monitor set up and in fact these three monitors on the top are all identical. They are all this um, HP Compact LA2405WG. It's a little bit of an older monitor but I do like them and the problem is this center one has just gone blank. It was flaking out for you know a couple of weeks um, where it would be dark and all I had to do to kind of fix this is I would come here and turn off the monitor and then turn it back on and sometimes it took a couple of attempts to do this but eventually it would actually pick up and it would display imagery um, but I think it's finally given up the ghost it's completely dead no matter how many times I turn on and turn off that thing it just stays dead um, so uh, let's see if we can actually figure out what is going wrong with this monitor so step number one is let's go ahead and remove it and get it on a bench so we can start disassembling it okay so this is probably the sketchiest part of this whole operation is we've got to come in here and you can already see I've mangled this a little bit but you got to get a flathead screwdriver and we're going to try to peel and get the bezel the front bezel away from the back bezel and again be really careful I can't tell you how many times my screwdriver slipped on this and I almost speared myself but if you do this you can get the bezel to kind of pop up whoops see there goes a slip um so, let me see if I can actually get this. Whoop, there's another slip. This thing is just not... Aha, there we go. Okay, let me get another screwdriver in there. Aha, pop, there we go. Okay, so you're going to have to pop this bezel off and go all the way around and do this on all four sides. So, we'll do that and we'll be back in just a second. All right, so I've got the bezel off. So, what you're going to do is uh, rotate this very gently, right, because there's a little board down here with a couple of wires. This is just the LEDs and I think the power on and all of that kind of stuff for the monitor. So get yourself a tiny little screwdriver and we are going to basically just remove this board so we can get the whole bezel clear of the entire system. So yep, one more here. There we go. It's held in pretty loosely. There we go. Whole thing comes off. Okay. And maybe what we're going to do is also Maybe why don't we just take this entire thing off? So this should be pretty simple. I think you just kind of remove here. There we go. Great. I'll save this and uh, we'll take a next step. Okay, so now flip the monitor upside down and you might have some screws back here that we might have to remove. So let's take these off. I think I just had a few of these. I think these are usually for that uh, VESA mount system. Right, if you have this thing hanging on to something, you might have to take these off. So I'm going to take these screws out. And now, I think this thing just will come right off. Yep, check that out. Yep, this thing just pops off. There we go. Okay, so we've got access to the guts. So now, let's actually, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and disconnect a few of these. Okay, so now let's get these cables off. So the way to do that is I think you just kind of press on this upper tab. Just pinch it down, and then this guy should just kind of work its way out there you go okay great got those two off so let's flip this around and we will also remove this cable to the USB pouch and again I think you can just kind of pull this guy and wiggle him out there we go okay and then we've got the video cable here um, there's some sticky tape underneath this cable, so I'm going to kind of slide a flathead in there to get it out. Okay, there we go. And then I think you can just pinch together up here on the ribbon, and then this thing, I believe, should just come out. There we go. Okay, great. Okay, and then last thing to do is there are four screws on the edge, so two on this side and two on the other side. So I'll remove those, and then we'll take some next steps. Okay, so we got all the screws off, so I think now, if we're careful, we can pull this entire top part off. There it comes, yep. I'll feed these cables down through the hole so it doesn't get caught. There we go, and then this whole thing, there we go. Basically comes off, and here we are. Got access to the board. So, this is the board that we're going to want to uh, play with, so let's go ahead and remove I think there's a few screws here so there's one two three four here on the front and then there's this guy here on the back so let me take all those off and see if we can get this uh, PCB off alright so we got those five screws off now there's two more I discovered right here by the uh, power the IEC power connection so I'm gonna take those off and we'll be back 
All right, so we should be able to take this board off now. Um, and partially, notice that there's still a wiring bundle attached. And in fact, this wiring bundle, if I turn this over, um, this attached to the PCB on this end is quite well stuck. I think this might actually be kind of hard soldered in, so you can't disconnect it too easily here. So instead, what we're gonna have to do is disconnect from this end. So we're gonna have to take this board up a little bit. So let's go ahead and see if we can get couple of these screws off on this PCB and get him up so we have a little bit better access to the um, ribbon cable on that side. All right, so again, I think we're not that lucky. So in addition to these two screws, um, I think there's a couple of these standoffs on the DVI and the VGA side that we're going to have to take off. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves a crescent wrench or something and uh, unscrew these four. And actually, gosh, it looks like there's even another one over here by the display port. So well, let's grab a couple and see if we can get some of these uh, out. And then we'll see if that PCB is going to come free. All right, so now this PCB comes loose. And okay, great. Now, I think if we're careful, to flip this over and let's see if we can take this off at this point. I think this is probably one of these. Yep, yep, this guy should be fine. So I'm gonna work my, I can't do this with one hand, but this guy should come right out. So let me pop the wiring bundle off of this. All right, so I've got that main PCB off. So now we can flip this guy over and take a look. And then a couple things to watch out for. There's some thermal compound on this. So you can see I kind of already got some on my fingers. So just be a little bit careful. But I think what we're interested in is, let me take a, see if I can pick this up so I can show you, is look at this. The, you can see how the board has been blackened kind of near these, these two diodes. And in fact, this capacitor right here, look at look at this. You can see how it's cracked, right? It's bulging up. So I think what we've got is problems with this diode, this diode, and definitely this capacitor and probably this capacitor. So they, apparently this is a fairly common problem. Um, we can actually go online and buy a replacement kit for these components. So I think that's probably the next step is get some spare parts. And then once they get here, let's see if we can think about removing these and replacing them with some uh, new components. All right, so our replacement components came in the mail. So uh, we can now think about desoldering and removing these components from the board. Now, the first thing we should probably do is make sure we make a note of the orientation of these components. So again, we are looking for diode number here. This is uh, diode number 101 and diode number 102. And I think you can kind of see the thin silver strip near the bottom, which denotes the cathode. So again, make a note of that. And then same thing with these dielectric capacitors right here. We're going for removing C122 and C123. And again, if you look at them, you can see the minus sign on both of them are facing down. So again, I've got a diagram of this board with these components and their orientations laid out. Um, I'll flash that up on the screen right here. But again, we made a note of that. And now the game plan is let's flip this board over. And you can also see on the back that it has the labels like you can, ah, gosh, I don't know if that's going to be easy to see, but yeah, here you can see, C. here's capacitor C122. And then right underneath of it is capacitor C123. And you can actually even see the diagram there as well, showing the orientation of those capacitors. So again, what we need to do is desolder these. So um, let's go ahead and get this on a stand and get the solder sucker out and see if we can get some of the solder off and remove these components. So desoldering these components and getting them off the board wasn't actually that bad. Um, if you've never done this before, I've got a dedicated video showing how to use a solder sucker to oh, remove gosh. solder and get components out. Um, I use the Engineer SS02 model, which oh, I'm very happy with. And again, I've got a dedicated video talking about using that device. So if you're interested in how to desolder or which component and which tool I use, feel free to check out any of these two videos. And again, it wasn't too bad to get the actual components off of this board for this monitor repair. All right, so we got those components off and now actually you can see the, uh, the diagrams for the diodes. And yep, here's the two capacitors we need to replace. So let's just go ahead and um, we might have to trim some of these a little bit. I think some of these tails are a little bit long, but let's basically get these new components mounted on the board and see if that helps. All right, so we got all the new components all soldered in. So now I think it's time to just reassemble in the reverse order and let's see if this works. 
All right, so we've got it all reassembled. So uh, we've gone ahead and plugged it into the power. So now let's give this thing a try and come down, hit the power button. Ah, uh, that's promising. Now let's look at the screen. Aha! Perfect, we now have a check video cable. So yeah, this is looking a lot better. Okay, so tell you what, next step, just as a final last step, is let's get a computer hooked up to this and see if we can actually get it to display a signal. All right, so I've got a laptop ready to go. Um, let's go ahead and get a VGA cable from the monitor and let's see if we can hook this into the laptop and see if we get a signal. This is kind of hard to do one-handed. Let me see if I can push this like that. There we go, bing, bing, bing. All right, let's see what it says. Aha, and there we go. It looks like it's back up and running. So, there you have it. That's a pretty quick, easy fix. So I think $7 worth of components to save this monitor is way better than buying a new one. And uh, now we don't have to send this to the landfill. So um, there you have it, a quick and easy way to fix this particular monitor, which in this case was this HP Compact LA2405WG. But I imagine the process probably extends to a lot of different monitors where, especially if you have those electrolytic capacitors, a lot of times with age, those things just go bad. So replacing a uh, capacitor or two and maybe a diode is uh, a lot more economical, right, than buying yourself a whole new monitor. And again, um, in the effort of reduce, reuse, recycle, I think we can uh, extend the life of this monitor a little bit longer. So. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this was helpful. And if so, I also hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Surprisingly, if you scroll a little ways down and click on that subscribe button, it really does help me continue making these videos. And remember, the new videos come out every Monday. So I hope I'll be able to catch you at one of those and we can all learn something new together. So until then, I think I'll sign off. Talk to you later. Bye.